Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max. Today you'll join me to discuss all-wheel drive, which is something you're probably familiar with in gas cars, but works a little bit differently in EVs, so I wanted to go over it today. So I live in the state of Colorado where people love to drive Subarus because they come standard with all-wheel drive, and Subaru does have a very good all-wheel drive system, meaning that basically both axles of the vehicle are engaged, in this case of Subarus, all the time. But this video isn't a Subaru ad, I just wanted to bring that up as an example, and there's many different ways that all-wheel drive currently exists in gas cars today, so I want to briefly go over that before we get into talking about the details of how this works in electric vehicles. So. Really quick history lesson here, all-wheel drive as we know it in cars today, as opposed to, you know, 4x4 or four-wheel drive for like off-road and military applications, we owe a lot of credit to all-wheel drive and passenger cars to Audi because in the, the 80s or so, I think it was the 80s, maybe late 70s, uh, their Group B rally division basically developed a system called Quattro, which was an all-wheel drive system using a drive shaft to connect their engine's power to the rear wheels so that both wheels could be engaged by way of basically a differential locker. So this was a very manual system. This meant that skilled drivers could kind of uh, engage traction when they needed to. But we don't need to get too much into the nerdy details of that. Just know that, you know, this was a rally technology that people had quickly learned had benefits for uh, passenger cars. So Audi has this Quattro branding that exists on a lot of their normal cars and passenger cars today. Uh, they do it in various ways with internal combustion. However, let's take a modern vehicle like the Audi e-tron. Not to say the combustion cars aren't modern, but a modern EV. Uh, how does this do all-wheel drive? Because, right, electric cars have motors. They don't have an engine. And those motors can be packaged in many different ways. Usually for basically all normal passenger road cars, we have an engine in the front that transfers power with a differential case. Uh, now, I know there's some supercars and other cars with engines in the middle, but we're not going to go into that today. But with an electric car, they can put the motor anywhere. So typically what they do for all-wheel drive on EVs is they package two motors, one for each axle. So uh, while you might have a base model where you just have one motor on the rear usually, or maybe the front, you know, making for front or rear wheel drive, uh, in the case of most electric cars with all-wheel drive, they opt to have two motors, one on the front, one in the back. Audi still brands this as a Quattro, Mercedes will call it Formatic. Uh, everyone has their own kind of branding for it. Some brands just call it all-wheel drive. Um, and usually you can actually enable this off or on with drive modes because most electric cars have the ability in some form to disconnect one of the axles or turn one of them off depending on their motor type. So uh, in the Audi e-tron, when you change your drive mode, you can basically change the uh, functionality of the all-wheel drive. And instead of having to move mechanical components like a gas car would, it's able to turn motors off or on or engage them more or less using electronics, which tend to be quicker uh, with the motors because motors can respond much quicker uh, to input than an engine can, because an engine can only adjust its power a few times a second. A motor can do that like a thousands of times in a second. Uh, so lots of nerdy details here, but just, just basically to let you know, most cars you're going to look at, most Teslas uh, that aren't performance models, most uh, uh, Audis, most Mercedes, mo um, basically almost every car you can get, Hyundai, Kia, they get all-wheel drive in their EVs by having a motor on each axle. Pretty simple. Uh, usually the primary one, the primary axle is what we call the motor that's always engaged for efficiency, um, is the rear. Sometimes it's the front, just depends on how they lay things out. Motors give them that flexibility, and you can see you can select the drive mode. But there's many ways to skin this cat, and I do want to go over some nuances. So there are plug-in hybrid vehicles like the Toyota RAV4 Prime that do some interesting things, because this is a car that has, right, a combustion engine, a hybrid system, and an uh, electrical system. It can be driven just as an EV. Well, every car is an electrical system, but you know what I mean. An EV system. It actually gets 40 miles of EV range. And this is a super interesting design because it has, of course, the engine in the front, it has a front electric motor, and it has a rear electric motor. And to get all-wheel drive on the Toyota RAV4 Prime, Toyota doesn't actually have a transfer case traditionally like you would get for all-wheel drive in most combustion cars. They use what's called an e-axle or an electric axle. Right, the flexibility of electric motors isn't just useful for pure electric cars, even hybrids are using it now to get all-wheel drive. And the RAV4 design is actually pretty clever uh, because it allows a very flexible system where the car can drive just with its engine or with its motors, and it can get all-wheel drive. But of course, to get all-wheel drive, it has to have that rear motor on, 
but that rear motor would get fl flexibility because otherwise to transfer power from the engine, they would need some kind of, you know, a torque uh, differential or some kind of drive shaft to send that. That's packaging. So if you've ever sat in the rear seats of a car and wondered why is there this big thing running down the middle, like for the middle passenger, usually you have a bump in the floor, that's for a drive shaft. Uh, and by not needing a drive shaft, that gives them more flexibility in packaging. They just have to put that smaller motor on the back and that, you know, is a lot better. Toyota also uses the technology on the Prius to have what they call E all wheel drive with the E axle. Again, this is just branding, but what it really means is basically that the Prius has uh, the all wheel drive option where all it's doing to get all wheel drive is having a motor on the back. Now this motor isn't as powerful as the engine in the Prius. Uh, it used to be really weak. I think the last generation one was like seven horsepower. So it was really just there to say they had it. And I guess it could help in very low speed situations. On the newest generation of Prius, they've beefed up that motor. So it's a little bit more helpful, but it's still an on-demand system where, you know, it's only engaging when it needs to, just for efficiency reasons. It's still not a massive motor. Uh, now, getting back to Tesla, like I said, right, most Tesla vehicles use dual motor all-wheel drive, like I described, very common to a lot of cars. However, you might have heard of the Plaid, right? My boss Kyle has the Tesla Model S Plaid, the very high performance model that gets like that two seconds, zero to 60. They also make the Model X, their high end SUV with the Plaid drivetrain. What is Plaid? Well, in Tesla speak, right, you can see this normal all wheel drive system. If we look at the normal Model X, one motor on each axle, they're not quite the same motor. Uh, they are set up a little bit differently, but sort of symmetrical, sort of similar. Now we get to Plaid and you can see that rear axle looks different. There's actually two motors that are uh, symmetrical um, that go on each end. Sorry, their sight's annoying. I don't know why it's switching between and just want to keep on one. Anyhow, uh, my criticism of Tesla's web design aside, you can see that there's basically right the one motor for each wheel on the back. This allows Tesla to do several cool things. One, uh, it's just more power, more motors. Uh, so especially in the rear, they're getting a lot of power. They have a beefier front motor, but those two symmetrical rear motors, but because they have basically a setup where each motor on the rear is controlling right its own wheel, they can do what's called torque vectoring and in a performance situation, drive one wheel harder than the other, get you know really good performance in turns and on tracks. So this is a really cool system. And there is one extension of this. So we've talked about, right, two motors, the vast majority of electric cars that offer all-wheel drive, three motors, this kind of performance setting that Tesla's using, uh, mostly just Tesla, I think. And then there's what Rivian has in their trucks and SUVs, which is quad motor all-wheel drive. And the, until now, this is basically the only system that Rivian has shipped. Rivian is coming out with a dual motor system that's going to be cheaper. But this quad motor system was a big innovation. And they're currently, I think, the only production EV in the market still uh, that you can buy that has a quad motor system. And so you can see the layout here. It's literally a motor for each wheel. Now, unlike uh, a hub motor, these motors aren't packaged on the wheel themselves, just like we've talked about, they're on the axles, but Rivian uses the system called half shaft, so one motor powers each wheel effectively. You can see the layout here. I'll just zoom in closer so you can see that. Uh, and this system is really flexible. They don't need a differential because of, of any kind because every each wheel has its own motor. However, this does give a lot of work to the computer because the computer has to figure out how do I power each motor when, Sometimes for efficiency, the truck is only powering the rear two motors on the highway for you know efficient driving. It doesn't need to engage the front two. Um, and off-road situations, it might need to engage all four sometimes at the same time to get out of like muddy situations or certain ones. Maybe it just needs to engage the front left and the rear right, for instance, depending on the terrain. So the computer can figure that out using slip sensors on the wheels. A lot of cool technology. However, uh, my boss Kyle, you know, loves his quad motor uh, Rivian it has its bugs now and then because the computer has to do so much work. So while the system in theory is genius and it does usually work pretty well, it does have its bugs. And when he did a performance situation uh, driving it a year ago, he did have some complaints. And I know Kyle would like to have the option of a real mechanical locker, which Rivian has lost because they've opted to go with this entirely motor-based system. However, the good news with this system is that because it's computer-based, it can be improved with software over time, which is just really cool and wild. 
but uh, they have actually made it better with a few updates. And Rivian now is going to offer a dual motor system. Uh, so this system is going to be cheaper, easier to package. And because you can see it uses a little bit less space, it should actually allow them to incorporate an even bigger battery, give the car more range. So everything in electric cars comes down to packaging uh, and doing that efficiently. Motors are flexible, but they do take up some space. So generally, the fewer you have, the cheaper your costs are, the more you can package. This is why most cars opt for that dual motor setup. However, I wanted to throw in the quad motor system because I think it's really cool and it offers a lot of potential especially in off-road situations or driving on sand or, you know, kind of mixed terrain. Now, I want to throw in one more thing here. This isn't really an on-road vehicle. This is a what they call a UTV, just kind of like an off-road ranch vehicle, the Polaris XP Kinetic. So you might have heard of Polaris. They make jet skis. They make these UTV things. They're basically like utility farm vehicles or like mini pickup trucks. And I just mentioned this because they also offer, right, the uh, kinetic version of their Ranger. So this is their bread and butter uh, kind of little UTV model. Well, the electric version of it uses, interestingly enough, a motorcycle drivetrain. They partner with this company called Zero that makes electric motors, and they only use a single motor for all-wheel drive. Now, again, not an on-road vehicle, but I thought it's worth mentioning because when they made this vehicle, they didn't want to change too much about the gas version. They just swapped into powertrain. And to offer a wheel drive, they actually still use that transfer case like they do on the gas one. So this is just kind of a throw in there because I know some of you will comment, well, there are some electric vehicles that have all wheel drive with one motor. Yes, there are ones like this. This is a very specific situation. Usually a manufacturer would only do this, like I said, when they have an existing gas vehicle that they want to uh, package in a different way so it can engage that transfer case and power all four wheels at once just like the gas version can they just swap that engine uh in the middle for uh, electric motor from a motorcycle so i just thought that was interesting to throw in there but anyhow that's just a brief kind of broad overview of what all-wheel drive means in an electric vehicle. Uh, you can see a vehicle like the Subaru Solterra, by the way, not the best electric vehicle, don't recommend it, but not what this video is about. Uh, that car gets all-wheel drive by virtue of having two motors, like is very common. Um, so most common system, but I want to throw in those other exceptions like Tesla's dry motor system, Rivian's quad motor system, and of course the Polaris system, which is just the motorcycle uh, motor with the transfer case. So that's a brief, broad explanation. Let us know in the comments if you have other questions about all-wheel drive and electric vehicles or other topics you want to see in Out of Spec Guide. I've been Matt. I'll see you next time.